Let's talk for a moment about CMSs, content management systems, and in particular web content management systems. That is, systems designed to provide websites for people to see documents on. Basically, there is no set definition for a CMS, but a CMS provides a set of functions around documents. So one of the things it allows you to do is separate the content, the document itself, from the presentation. It allows you to style a site. It allows you to use that content in various places on the same site without having to replicate that and allows you to have a kind of a, a fill in the blank template style. It allows you to um, kind of manage the lifestyle of a doc uh, sorry life cycle of a document from kind of its drafting to different version control to its presentation and then eventually to its archiving it allows you to control access to each of those stages and to each of those documents in a fairly fine-grained way um, with a range of different users having different kinds of access. So you might have an editor, for example, or contributors, um, and you have a way of, of shaping their interaction with that document system. So that's a very high thing. I realize it's a very loose thing. So my, from what I just described, maybe something like Blogger is that? Yes, that's true, right? It has a, a blog and it, it provides documents for that. Maybe something like a, a, a Elgar or another um, um, sort of social networking sites that sure because it has different users having different ways of accessing documents and exchanging them maybe something like wikipedia is even though you, you know as a basic user you can actually edit pages still that's a, a dealing with documents it certainly has version control all of those things are kinds of forms of content management but really when we talk about a content management system we're talking about something that can reproduce any of those in other words usually when people talk about a cms they're talking about something much more flexible that has um, that's able to create any kind any of these kinds of genres of um of material for the web or document management for the web there's a whole range of both commercial and uh, open source um, systems that are provided for uh, content management. Uh, I'm going to limit myself to the three most popular uh, systems uh, for open source content management right now. Um, and those are WordPress, Joomla, uh, WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. Why am I limiting myself to those? Well, because when you're dealing with open source, it's actually unlike you know, if all every, everyone you know jumps off a cliff, should you do it? For open source, yeah, you probably should. Um, why? Because there are not just economies of scale in this case, but sort of uh, creativity of scale. That is, if there's very large developer communities, it, it's more likely you're going to find people to help you develop and tools to help you develop, as well as the actual plugins and extensions that you want. So let's start with um, WordPress. You all know WordPress fairly well. It's something that can install easily and it works well on installation. Um, it's kind of a trooper. It, it was a great blog to start with and they opened it and a large community gathered around it and they started to make it better and better over time and often they changed WordPress to do things that beyond blogging right to do things that it wasn't originally intended to do um, and especially through its plugin structure you can have a WordPress site that looks a lot like a wiki or one through something like BuddyPress that looks a lot like a social network so it starts to get it starts to get into that range where it can do be flexible enough to do any kind of um, website for the web or any kind of uh, what any kind of extensive genre or any of the extensive genres of of document management you might expect for the web right so it's been bent towards that and in fact as it's evolved WordPress itself is kind of take even in its core has taken on some of these and it, as it stands right now when you install a WordPress it's a very nice very clean piece of functioning software even with just the basic install it works really really well and it has a whole bunch of plugins that makes it make make it very flexible it's easy to use and easy to learn um, it's quick it's efficient um, there's a large community base for it it's got lots going for it it hits starts to hit its extensions when when you have when you're building very large sites so for example um, the New York Times blogging site is built on on a version of of um, WordPress but it's not really designed for that and it's not and there you if you're doing something pretty far from blogging you'll start to see um, kind of the you you start to feel like you're bending it outside of its original use. Drupal's on the whole other 
side of that spectrum. Drupal, really any kind of system, if you wanted to design Reddit, you could do it in, in Drupal. If you wanted to design Dig, you could do it in Drupal. If you wanted to do Facebook, you could do it in Drupal. It's an extraordinarily flexible piece of software. It also scales very, very well. So sites like The Onion um, or Whitehouse.gov are based on Drupal. Um, so for an open source system, it does very well with that. Now, what that means is that it also has a very high learning curve. That is, it's more difficult to, much more difficult to use, I think, than WordPress is um, to come to understand it and, and the language behind it and how to alter it. Um, and it also requires a little bit more on the server side. So, um, for example, if you're using a shared host like DreamHost, it can get a little bit laggy um, because of the number of, of database requests it makes in order to complete a, an average page. Now, you can fine tune it, but out of the box, it doesn't have the same experience. In fact, out of the box, it doesn't look like that. It looks a little bit more like this. Um, unlike uh, WordPress, when you install Drupal, and it's not as easy to install as, as WordPress, um, it's not difficult, but it's not as, as easy as not as easy as WordPress. It doesn't look great coming out of the box necessarily. You actually have to do a bit of work to have it be something other than just kind of a blob. When it comes out, it's just, yeah, you can implement a blog a little bit, but you'll have to do some work before it can actually be anything. In between these two is Joomla, um, and I won't say much about it other than to say um, it's easy to install like WordPress. It, it can, it's a little bit more flexible than WordPress is. And you'd think because it's that in between, I would love it, but I am not a big fan of Joomla. Um, yes, it has lots of off the shelf themes. Yes, it has some plugins, although a lot of them cost money. But to me, it seems like it is not the best of wor both worlds, but the worst of both worlds, right? It's not as flexible or as powerful as Drupal is, and it's not as easy to use um, or as clean as, as, as to install and quick to develop on as WordPress. So for me, I very rarely, in fact, almost never find myself reaching for Joomla. If someone has Joomla and they like it, that's fine. But for me, it's either going to be WordPress for a very small site that's quick to put together or Drupal for something that's a little bit more complex.